Hey everybody, Argent here. So, figure I might as well record this on my shitty cell phone cam. Um, I probably should wait home and use my good mic, but it is what it is. Nothing I can do, but I digress. So I just got out of watching War for the Planet of the Apes. Uh, was it as good as I thought it was going to be? Hell yeah, it was. Uh, first off, if you haven't watched the first two movies, go watch the first two movies and go see this in theaters. I give this a 9.5 out of 10. Amazing movie. One of the best... Best trilogies of all time. It's up there with, like, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, uh, Nolan's Batman reboot. It's up there with, like, the very best trilogies ever made. Um, I did another video where I talked about why I love this movie series, and this movie just delivered on everything I liked about the first two. So let's just go in and talk about the plot a bit. So this takes place sometime after the events of the second movie where Koba had started the war between humans and apes. And the, the remains of the U.S. Army sent a colonel, we'll call him Colonel Kurtz, with a group of special forces down south to wipe out the apes. So Colonel Kurtz is doing pretty well. He succeeded in uh, killing a lot of them. Um... And Caesar is increasingly being driven back further and further into the forest. Uh, the issue, the apes just don't have heavy weapons or military training. Um, they have a couple guns. They can use guns. And they have a lot of horses. But aside from that, and just superior strength and stuff, there, there isn't really much the apes can do to fend off the humans. And you have a battle scene in the beginning where the humans basically kick the apes' asses. I mean, they lose in the end because it's like 12 of them versus like 200 apes. But they succeed in killing like 60 of them. Uh, the only thing the apes can really do is the apes can... Uh, um, they, they get what would be it called smoke grenades. So they get like smoke grenades and then they come in with lancers and arrows and they're able to kill the special forces. So Caesar leaves a couple of them alive, and he sends them back to the colonel with a peace offering. Basically, this is a show of mercy. I didn't kill these men who killed my, my people. Um, yeah, I offered you mercy. Um, excuse me. You stay out of my land, and we'll leave you alone. The forest belonged to us. It's, it's our home. Just keep away. So during this time period, we also have an issue where um, a lot of the apes have defected. Uh, the remains of Koba's followers, following the second movie, have joined with the humans. And they're given the title Donkey. Uh, kind of funny, because the, um, the apes are called Kongs. So that's kind of the, slay, the uh, slang name the U.S. Army uses for them. So the, the apes who collaborate are called Donkeys. And then there's the Kongs. So, Caesar realizes he's basically screwed at this point. He doesn't have the manpower, well, the ape power, or the weapons to fight Colonel Kurtz. So, he's preparing to flee um, across the mountains in a desert to a new area. I don't know if it's Utah or wherever, but somewhere over the uh, mountains and desert. And found a new home there away from humanity. However, in the middle of the night, Colonel Kurtz and a team of commandos sneak in, and Kurtz succeeds in killing Caesar's wife and uh, older child, Bright Eyes. So Caesar, no, no, uh, Caesar understandably gets pretty upset by this, and he decides to basically leave the apes um, behind to pursue his vendetta against Colonel Kurtz for killing his wife and son. So, yeah, so that happens. So, Colonel Kurt, so sorry, Caesar, Maurice, who's the, the really cute orangutan, um, Rocket, who's another chimp, and the gorilla guy whose name escapes me, all go off together to find, um, to find Colonel Kurtz and kill him. And they pick up a, a girl later on who becomes Nova from the uh, original movie. Although it's weird because the original movie looks like it takes place centuries later. So I, I don't really know. The timeline doesn't really make sense here, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, so 
they find this girl and they find she can't speak. She's incapable of speech. Uh, she knows some sign language and they can communicate her with her that way, but she can't speak. So immediately what I, I think most people who watch this will think is, yeah, I remember in the original movie, humans couldn't speak. Um, but we thought the reason was because the apes had basically oppressed them for so long that they just didn't know how to speak anymore, or they hadn't really, the apes had stopped them from developing a language. But actually what happened was the virus that killed most of humanity mutated, and it, it, it not only, it, it, on the surviving population, it reduced them to a kind of a bestial state, similar in intelligence to an ape, uh, and they're no longer able to speak. So, so that's happening. So, Caesar and uh, Maurice, they take the girl with them, and they, they go out in search of Colonel Kurtz. Along the way, they find that Kurtz has been killing his men, who have been, uh, been getting shot with the... Uh, who have been getting the virus. Uh, because the virus is highly contagious, and he doesn't want it to spread. So that, that makes sense. They come across another ape named Bad Ape, who is from a zoo... And he can speak like Caesar can, uh, but he, he also just is really messed up uh, just from his time in the, in the zoo and what happened afterwards where all of his comrades, including his son, were killed. So yeah, so Caesar continues his vendetta um, and they succeed in making it to Kurtz's base. However, Caesar gets um, arrested by Colonel Kurtz. Yeah, so Caesar got arrested by Colonel Kurtz, and after that happens, we have um, we find out that the apes that Caesar was Caesar was partially pursuing his vendetta against Kurtz, but he was also sending the rest of them to uh, try to get to the uh, the the, uh, the safe place, and he was going to kind of be bait. Um, he was going to kind of be the bait to lure them away, as it were. So. Yeah, so Caesar was doing that, and he was luring them uh, away, but now he's been captured, and he finds out that everyone else has been captured, and that Kurtz is working them to death to build a wall around his base. Now, at this point, Caesar thinks that, because he, he heard that there was a bunch of soldiers coming up to the border, and Kurtz's base is on the border. So Caesar initially thinks that the, uh, the humans are coming up as reinforcements uh, to help Kurtz finish them off. But the, uh, the truth of the matter is that... Um, the truth of the matter... That's kind of cool there. Is that um, they're actually coming there to kill Kurtz and take his command back. See, what happened was there's kind of a breakdown in the uh, chain of command over the whole issue of the virus. Um, Kurtz wants to kill everybody infected with the virus because he believes that it is the end of humanity if this is allowed to spread. Uh, that we have to sacrifice the people who are infected in order to continue the world. Um, the, the army to the north thinks it can be treated medically and they aren't willing to kill more people with a dwindling humanity. So they've, they've, they've kind of gone to war with one another. Kurtz has also kind of adopted some Christian symbolism in kind of a millenarian cult um, because he wears, like, he wears a crucifix. They're called Alpha Omega. Um, it doesn't offend me at all. It's, it's pretty obviously he's just using it for a um, kind of a, like I said, kind of a millenarian cult type thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah. So Kurtz talks with Caesar, and he explains that his his son, his only son, was out searching for the apes, and his son contracted the the uh, the throat parasite, or sorry, the um, the low IQ parasite. And the guy who was taking care of his son also contracted it, and that entire squad of soldiers basically went missing. So Kurtz goes out with another group to find the uh, the people. And he discovers his son babbling like an idiot, being reduced to a bestial state. So he shoots his son and has his body burned. 
and he shoots the, the bodies of all the shoots all the infected and has their bodies burned. He also kills any of their family members who object. As at this point in time, he views the survival of some form of humanity. It, 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 and by humanity, he means the ability to reason, the ability of speech, of higher brain functions, as being the most important, regardless of how much smaller it has to become. So, Caesar and him have a heart-to-heart, and they, they kind of reach a bit of an understanding. I think there's a bit of mutual respect between them. Uh, Caesar obviously feels some sympathy for Colonel Kurtz. And I think it should be noted that Kurtz, well, well kind of a, a very brutal man who's willing to kill people, use um, just death and destruction. The movie, I think, is somewhat sympathetic to him. He is a man who's been driven to the edge. And literally, this is the end of the world. This is the end of humanity. He's had to see and do things that would drive any man crazy. And this is just kind of what he thinks is the right thing, regardless, to just try to um, save what's left of humanity. So I, I think you can sympathize with him. I think you can say some of the stuff he did was evil. But I, I think at the same time, the movie doesn't say he's just a black and white cartoon villain. Uh, there's reasons for the actions he took. And you can have a debate as to whether which ones were justified, if, if any of them. So I like that aspect of the movie a lot. It, this was not a very political or preachy movie. Um, not at all. It was very... There's a lot of gray. Well, the apes were clearly kind of the protagonists. There's also the apes who, who defected. Uh, the humans were largely just kind of scared and traumatized. And they just kind of don't have much hope left. And to a certain extent, they just kind of blame the apes for it. So the apes are living in basically slavery. Um, and Caesar kind of stands up to Kurtz. And through kind of a battle of wills, Kurtz keeps um, beating him. He leaves him outside on a cold night and throws water on him. He starves him. And with help of some of the other apes, Caesar's able to get food and water and survive. <coughs> so they start planning um, an escape. Because the idea is if they can get out while the other humans are attacking them, then... Yeah, if they can get out while the other humans are attacking them, then in, as the humans destroy one another, they can escape to their new homeland. Kurtz does point out, though, that the other humans hate apes just as much as he does, and they will also exterminate them. So... <coughs> So Maurice and Bad Ape and uh, Nova basically come up, realize that the entire base is built on an abandoned mine. And the abandoned mine has like all these tunnels that run all under the, um, the city, but run all under the, the military base. So they start digging a network of tunnels uh, using the drainage ditch and stuff. And through these tunnels, they're able to get all of the, the apes out and they kind of have a funny scene where they, they throw ape shit at the guy who's on the watch and so yeah so, they, so he comes down and then they grab him from below and get the keys to the cage so they go in and they save all the kids including Caesar's remaining uh, young son so then they get out through the tunnel system as the attack starts. So as the attack starts, Caesar com comments that like Koba, and it's kind of a reoccurring thing throughout the movie, is people say he's become like Koba and his hate towards humanity. He says, I can't get rid of the hate so long as Kurtz is alive. So he, like, he puts Maurice in charge of the apes and decides that he's going to go and, and finish the job, as it were. Kind of like in uh, Halo 2, finish the fight. So yeah, so, so he goes after Kurtz, and he finds Kurtz uh, has locked himself in his room, and is drinking, has pretty much almost drank himself to death, and he's lying in his bed. So Caesar goes and, and pulls out Kurtz's gun and holds it to his head, only to realize that Kurtz has been affected with the virus. You see Nova to comfort Caesar when he was getting beaten gave him her doll, and her doll was of course full of the virus. 
So Kurtz has suffered pretty much the worst fate possible. He's become one of uh, what he considers the threat to humanity. So Kurtz begs Caesar to kill him, but Caesar refuses and leaves the gun. Kurtz shoots himself, and Caesar goes out. So Caesar's able to... Um, so Caesar's able to... Um, blow up the base and get the apes out uh, just because this whole time the two human armies are fighting each other so the US army wins and they come in with a huge land force however the exploding of the base because Caesar blew up their fuel supplies and it triggered a chain reaction because the whole mountain was an old military depot and it's full of ammo and explosives and stuff like that so that blows up and an avalanche wipes out the remaining human soldiers at this point, the entirety of the U.S. Army is dead, and almost all of their remaining resources, like helicopters, planes, tanks, have, were also destroyed in the battle. So with humanity no longer possessing the means uh, to continue its survival, uh, what remains of the United States is now dead, and we are truly looking at a planet of the apes. Caesar succeeds in leading the apes across the mountains. He does get shot, ironically enough, by one of the people he spared earlier in the movie. And um, the wound he's able to cover up until he reaches the, um, the place where the apes will start their new home. And as he reaches it, he's unable to go any further. And he, he dies with a smile on his face, seeing the apes and the ape children play in the, um, the, for, the lush uh, foliage and um, water of the, uh, their new homeland, uh, knowing that he accomplished his mission. Maurice tells him that his son will know of him and know the things he did, and leaving Maurice to lead the apes into a, an era of peace and prosperity, Caesar at last dies. And then that's the end. And I gotta say, it was an amazing trilogy. Uh, it was just, it was truly incredible. Um, the thing I like about it is humanity destroys itself in the in the end. Uh, the apes really have nothing to do with it. The trailer kind of makes it look like the war for the planet of the apes is going to be the apes get a bunch of weapons and the humans get a bunch of weapons and they kind of duke it out for mastery of the earth. But in the end, it's humanity that destroys humanity, be it the creation of the virus irresponsibly, be it the, um, uh, the greed that leads to that, be it the war over obscure parts of ideology despite the fact that humanity is basically extinct at this point. Yeah. All that, uh, all that stuff kind of happens, and the apes are kind of tendential to it. All the apes wanted was to ensure a future for apes and ape children. It's kind of a 1480 ape franchise. So, yeah, I, I really sympathize with the apes. Um, the apes are shown to have, their society has virtually no crime. There are some traitors they have to deal with. But by and large, they, there's very little degeneracy. Everyone seems to live in stable nuclear families. Uh, they, the apes practice monogamous marriage and have high child involvement, and they're a high trust society. One of the kind of reoccurring motifs in the movie is the apes yelling, ape together strong. And the kind of the unity of their nation and their shared struggle is considered very important. I think these movies are kind of perhaps the celebration of nationalism, uh, intentionally or unintentionally it's the most basic form, as a shared family with a shared history, a shared culture that has kind of become more than the sum of its parts, that's more than the individual, and is something that we should be ready to sacrifice to protect. So that's War for the Planet of the Apes. Hopefully uh, this was kind of an interesting review format. This kind of stream of consciousness, while well, it's really fresh in my mind. So I hope you enjoyed it. Watch the movie. This is Arjun. I'll talk to you later.